Advanced Computing and Engineering courses with Springboard at ATU. My name is Margaret Mulcrone and I will be your host for this live talk this evening. Today I'm joined by Catherine O'Reilly, Springboard Coordinator, and two of our students here, Alan Healy and Ricardo Joye. Today, we will be chatting about some online blended part-time courses currently being run at ATU that are either free or funded in the area of computing and engineering and the opportunities available for part-time online and blended programs across all campuses in ATU. So before we start, I'm actually going to mention some housekeeping. This session will be recorded, but attendees will not be visible. Our talk will last for approximately 20 minutes. We're not taking questions directly within this talk. However, if you want to head to the live Q&A section of our virtual open evening platform, you can submit any questions there and our team will get back to you straight away. So Catherine, we'll actually start with you if that's okay. Sure. You're very welcome and thank you for joining us. Firstly, can you explain to our audience what Springboard funding is? Of course, Margaret, and good evening, everybody. So Springboard is a, an initiative that was launched by the government, first of all, in 2011, and it was a strategy to target the funding of free or higher education courses, initially really to encourage job seekers back into the workplace. But as time has gone on, what's really become apparent is there are as many outside the workforce that want to return to it, but also those within the workforce that actually want to upskill as well. So that's where Springboard is absolutely fantastic. So it's a funding mechanism for a range of programs from level six to level nine on the national framework of qualifications. So all of the courses selected by Springboard for funding are in areas where they have identified a specific skills need. So there's plenty of actual employment opportunities for anyone looking to upskill or reskill. So there's four categories of applicants who are eligible to apply for Springboard funded programs. So those who are unemployed and in receipt of a qualifying welfare payment are signing for credits. In employment, those who are in employment or self-employed, those who are classified as returners. So they're individuals that have been economically dependent on a spouse or partner for nine out of the last 12 months. And then there's quite a niche category called recent graduates and those that have recently graduated from an NFQ level eight degree within the last 12 months prior to the start of a springboard course and they can apply for our ICT skills conversion courses. So if anybody is interested in finding out any more information about springboard, they can have a look at www.springboardcourses.ie and more specifically about any, any of the programs that ATU have on offer, they can look at our website at www.atu.ie. That's brilliant, Catherine. Thank you. And with, I suppose, the theme of computing and engineering, can you give examples of ATU computing and engineering programs that have run with Springboard in the last year? Sure. So for the academic year 22-23, examples of programs that we ran in our Donegal College, we offered a level six certificate in digital skills, a level seven diploma in applied data technologies and a level eight cert in fire safety engineering. In our Sligo College, we offered a level six cert in wastewater treatment operations, a level eight cert in uh, cloud computing, a level seven cert in mechatronic engineering and a level eight higher diploma in science and computing. And in our Galway College, we offered a level eight bachelor of engineering add-on in industrial engineering, a level seven bachelor of engineering add-on in manufacturing engineering, and a level eight higher diploma in science and computing with data analytics. So they're just a couple of examples of the programs that we offered last year on Springboard, and we're hopeful of a similar suite of programs for 23-24. Once this initiative is launched, we'll know further at that stage, but we will have a lot more programs in addition to just that snapshot there. Wow, that's brilliant. There's a lot to offer there. And just in relation to, I suppose, the skills gap in the market, do you think there's actually a demand and need for these type of courses in the current climate? Oh, absolutely, Margaret. So there are two key bodies that assist the government in predicting future skills needs. You have the Skills and Labour Market Research Unit and the Expert Group on Future Skills Needs. And actually both of those groups have identified skill gaps, specifically in engineering and technology, in construction and in ICT skills. So the initiative itself was actually designed to fill those gaps. So... I suppose in layman's terms, the initiative wouldn't still be there if the gaps weren't still there. So there's definite skills gaps, definite employment opportunities on all those areas of engineering and ICT. That's brilliant. That's good to hear. Alan, you're up next and you're very welcome. Yeah, and thank, thank you so you. much. I know you're busy with assignments as well. So really do appreciate yeah. you coming on board today. Um, well, you're thank you very much. Great. You were actually currently a student actually on the Bachelor of Engineering in Industrial Engineering at ATU Galway. And you're also yeah. working in the as a manufacturing engineer in Medtronics here in Galway That's as well. Correct, yeah. So yeah, you're yes. busy. 
Yeah. So you, is a drug eluting stent Dell's manufacturing you're involved with? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I, 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 sorry. Go ahead, yeah. Go on ahead, yeah. Uh, yeah. So I work as a manufacturing engineer in uh, Galway uh, site in Parkmore. Uh, the site manufactures uh, coronary uh, uh, drug eluting stents. It's so the site has a, a range of different products, but a big part of the business there is drug eluting stent. And uh, I um, the had been studying in ATU uh, prior to doing the course I'm on. I um, my background was I was a geologist in the construction industry, and I changed careers. That was the motivation for me. Up, uh, upskilling and doing doing this program. I ended up in this program through two other programs in ATU. So the first program was in 15 to 17, and that was a, an excellent uh, industrial automation course, which ran uh, one evening a week. And it was for technicians that were working on equipment. And we were taught by uh, two uh, to the lecturers there in the electrical department and we just got excellent safety training, excellent programming training and that skill was uh, uh, brought back in-house into the business in Metronic and uh, people have developed uh, from the, the course we did back then. Uh, follow that with the A, uh, 21-22 BNG Level 7 in Manufacturing and that was a very, very good course, excellent lead into the current course which is Industrial Engineering which I'm doing now. That's fantastic, Ellen. So you've been with us a good while, haven't you? Uh, I have, yes. I have. Yeah, we won't let yeah. you go yet either, will we, Alan? Yeah. <laughs> we'll bring you up it... to a master's as well. I'm sure we'll find <laughs> you somewhere <laughs> between all the campuses we have at the moment. Um, yeah. And you're busy, busy. So how do you balance the work and study? Yeah, so um, I actually, the, it, it is definitely very challenging. Uh, but because the course is extremely well designed, the hours match, the uh, appear to match uh, very closely the work shift pattern in Metronic uh, and the work itself. So when you're at work, you're actually doing part of your industrial project, which is part of this level eight honours degree. So you're going to undertake an industrial project and that under industrial project is very welcome by your uh, by my employer, Betronic, because it's based around uh, saving, uh, saving the business money. And you're going to be trained on the program if you do it in uh, saving your going in and looking at uh, waste and problems in the business and uh, uh, working your way systematically through that. So the, the the time challenges of it, certainly it is challenging, but uh, the work, your workplace itself uh, provides, in my case, the opportunity to to carry out work on the, pro uh, the project. Yeah. That's brilliant, Alan. So it's been beneficial in your line of work as well, has it? It's been extremely beneficial. It's it's actually in Metronic in Galway. It's a sought after course. Uh, some pr people have been through it previous uh, previous years. Uh, there's three of us at the moment on the program, and we're all involved. We all work in the drug eluting stent area. Uh, sorry, there's actually a fourth person, and we're. Uh, it, it's extremely helpful. It's very helpful. Uh, the course material, the course is designed so that uh, it, you have the right tool at the right time, uh, at the right stage in your project. And what I mean by that is that in your, uh, we have taught classes, obviously, and lectures, and the uh, what we do in those lectures. The, the the tools and the training that will be provided to you when you're at the uh, define phase and when you're at the measure phase. And so it's extremely well designed. And then it's supplemented then by, uh, I have we weekly meetings, very fortunate to have these weekly meetings with my uh, academic supervisor and they're excellent. So ATU gets to go sit beside me in the driving seat of this project and they have full insight into the uh, the outputs of our smart digital factory uh, you know thousands of samples being uh, wow. registered each day in the system they can my academic academic supervisor can cast his eye over that on a weekly basis and all our decision making uh, all his he has an insight into what I'm doing and and that's very very good that sounds actually both efficient and effective, you know, the yeah. real life experience. Brilliant, Alan. Yes, yeah. Yeah, it's and, extremely effective and helpful. Yeah. Yeah. And 
if your program is it online is it or on site or part time or on campus uh, my program is it's 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 an online program uh some of my exams will be uh i've had some uh exams on uh, on site but uh predominantly it's been uh, it's been a, it's been on that we had some presentations at the campus but it's it's an online program and uh, yeah that's brilliant, Alan. So we hope to keep you with us for the 20 years at least, okay? You can do more than just a degree, you can do the, the master's as well, maybe a PhD at some stage. <laughs> we'll hang thank on you very to you. much. Next thank up, you. Ricardo. Uh, you're, thank you, Alan, you've been brilliant. Mm. Um, and the, the great thing about online and the next person we're speaking to, Ricardo, and he's an example of it, he's actually living in Tipperary, but he's studying the BSc Honours Contemporary Software Development in ATU Donegal. Um, so this is the magic of online learning. So you're actually senior net development operations engineer for your own company, Ricardo, and it's called Dual IT Solutions. But you're also contracting for a company called uh, the Navy Group. So while you're busy too, um, can you yeah. actually tell me about your experience, um, I suppose, in your career? And then why did you choose to come along and study on the course? Yes. Good evening, everyone. Um, yeah. So I've been working in in IT since uh, since ever. So I I wrote my first line of code in primary school. Uh, started to fix my friends' computers, and uh, then I realized that I could make some money with that. Um, but I suppose the the bug of development started when I had to develop or when I developed a website for my grunge band in the late nineties. And uh, here I am, no band, but I still have the job. Um, so I ended up um, in this course because it had a combination of factors that I was looking for. Uh, it had to be relevant in terms of content and motivating because I have a short attention span. I get bored. Uh, in other hand, uh, there was the commodity of being online. Um, so I could join from anywhere, as you said. Like I'm in temporary now, but I was living in Cork uh, three months ago. And actually, I met a friend that went to school with me in Lisbon, Portugal, and he's in Portugal and he's on my class. Um, and uh, on the other hand, um, it's uh, because it's part time and online, I can conciliate my personal and work life um, and I can get the certification and accreditation for my current skills and learn something in the process. Brilliant. And how has this course actually benefited your career as such? Um, well, in many levels, but, uh, you know, to begin, um, I'll get to finish my degree, which uh, is, has always been a, a goal and something mm -hmm. that I've been trying to do for, for a long time. Um, it also uh, allowed me to consolidate my knowledge, um, uh, that I acquired throughout my career, uh, and get that validation, um, that what I was doing and that what I, I've been saying that it's right is actually right and correct. And it's, uh, actually a best practice in the industry. Um, I've always um been learning online since uh, I started using internet um so you know there's a lot of things that we learn or we read but we're not quite sure if those are uh, correct so now that I got the assignments done and uh, you know I got peer reviewed I also feel more confident when I talk about these topics that you know I know that you know now I have facts I know what I'm talking about Real life facts. That's brilliant. And how did you learn actually? Have you any advice for anyone thinking of upskilling and doing a course in software development? Um, it, there are plenty of uh, resources, of course, that people can use. Um, I used before uh, edX and Coursera and so forth. And uh, when I came to, to Ireland uh, in um, 2016, I was looking for uh, something like that, but, um, you know, some colleges that had courses. I have a vague idea that I had a discussion with um, Dr. Uh, or Orla, the um, Orla president. Flynn. Oral Flynn, yes. and I, 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 I asked about something like that. Uh, if there was something like Coursera on ATU, or there wasn't ATU, I think at the time, and um, I kept searching for something, and then I ended up finding um, uh, Springboard, and um, you know, it was the the combination of what I was looking for, and uh, I suppose that you know, you just just keep looking for what you're what you want and uh, the topics that you are looking for there are loads of uh, good resources some are curated some some, some are not but uh you know springboard is definitely uh, a great place to 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 start 
brilliant, Ricardo. And how do you actually balance the whole work, you know, um, social life and balance, you know? It's not easy. No? <laughs> uh, you really have to set time and then and, and commit to it. Um, yeah. You know, everything moves very fast. Um, the courses are... Um, two months or three months, something like that. Um, it's, you know, not as fast as technology. Technology is a bit faster, but it's still fast. You have to keep pace, uh, keep up with the, the content. Um, the content is released uh, every week for uh, each course, uh, especially if the content is new for you. Um, you have the assignments to do. Um, and if uh, you're like, uh, if you're a professionist uh, like me, and I know I am, uh, Every work, every assignment has to be at the very least um, in a way that I'm happy to to deliver it, and I have to submit it before the due date. So, okay. um, as Alan was saying, like if you're in the field, the experience blends, and that's uh, you know the beauty of this. Uh, I can use what I'm learning at the course at my workplace and I get more efficient and I get better at what I'm doing. And I can also use that experience when I'm doing the assignments, when I'm supposed to, you know, write about how this is a better option uh, instead of something else. So um, that's also something that you can do about personal time. That's the part that it's hard to get. Um, so one way to do it is to get the assignments done faster. Yes, I think, yeah, it's been disciplined, I think. And if we all yes. have a goal, it depends on how much we want to attain that goal. I was saying to you earlier before we came live that when I was doing my master's, I did a springboard program initially, the level nine. And my only way was getting up at half five in the morning for two hours before my kids got up, you know, so that was a sacrifice I had to make. But my goal was to have that um, graduation day out, you know, have that master. So I think for the audience listening in, there's no good time. There's no right time. Um, so just have a look at springboardcourses.ie in the next a few weeks or so and hopefully it'll be launched those programs that will be on offer um, we have many programs not just in computing and engineering and if you have a look at that website you'll have more detail um, so just in relation to springboard programs so if anybody actually is interested in our springboard courses as I said you can complete the register your interest form on the platform this evening so thank you Catherine Alan Roberto for being part of our panel this evening you've all been wonderful thank you very much there was lots of really good information shared there, guys. So if you'd like to watch back, we'll upload a video of this live talk to our virtual open evening webpage and you'll be able to watch it back again. And if you have any questions regarding this talk or any of our courses, indeed, just head over to our ask a question section and our team are available to answer your questions until 9 p.m. this evening. So thank you for joining and I hope you enjoy the rest of our virtual open evening. Good night.